Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Apache Smash and his crew. <laughs> Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again. Um, I'm, this is my first time doing Resident Evil 2 at MAGFest. I'm super excited to play it. It's one of my favorite games ever made. Uh, yeah, it's Days Ahead, Alien, Paymon, and Vermillion. Um, they're going to be talking throughout um, where they can get a word in. I tend to just talk a lot during these runs, but um, I'm going to get started off. So it's Leon first. We're playing on hardcore in three, two, one. Let's go. All right, so no damage is, um, every time you start the game, I, I don't know what that means, but I've never seen that before, but I'm sure it'll go away. Um, no damage is, every time you start a new game of this game, you get 1,200 HP. Your life is represented by the, you are right. I'm trying to open the menu, but the button's not working. Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll go with it for now, we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, you have 1,200 HP, Please. so uh, no damage is anything that deals damage that takes you from less than 1,200 HP. So certain things kind of look like they hit you in the game, but they count as a hit, but they don't count as damage. I'm just going to wait for this guy to leave, and then I'm going to walk past him. He can do a bunch of stuff. He can like run at you, um, he can stumble towards you slowly, he can lunch at you, like, but fortunately he did the thing where he just walks away. Um, so yeah, we can leave the gas station, and if you just stand still, uh, Claire will turn up either way. You don't actually have to run towards the door. But yeah, I'm a little bit concerned my menu button's not working. Do you think it'll be fine if I can't open the menu the entire... I guess uh, we'll find out. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I might have to change the settings. I'm just going to scoot past this lady here. Um, she's a little bit distressed. And make our way into the RPD. Now, you'd think, like, the start of the game, this must be, like, the easy part. But the way they designed this game is... The RPD is probably the hardest part because you don't have... Um, all the items and weapons you can pick up. So you just Leon with, with your pistol, um, and there's a whole bunch of enemies. Um, wouldn't it be awkward if I got bit by the very first zombie that you kind of walk past on the way into RPD? <laughs> Hopefully not. Right. Uh, this guy's a nightmare. So I'm gonna like take a ridiculous angle around him. Um, he can be in a, a bunch of spots, and. Uh, I will admit, doing these no damage runs, I have been bit by him, uh, let's say at least at least once. Alright, we're in. I'm going to go through this door that says, keep out. And we're going to hear a gentleman uh, screaming for some help. So no damage throughout, I'll do strats that are um, consistent, which means if I do actually take damage, it will be my fault and not the game's fault. Um, so we're going for things that are always 100% consistent, but the more consistent something is, it means like the... Uh... Alright, I'm, I'm, I was talking and a guy started screaming at me. <laughs> uh, so for things like consistency, we, need, we want to get this zombie trapped in this room. So this zombie's not really a problem now, you can normally just run past him, but if you get tra him trapped in this room now, he's not in the way later. He can spawn like right behind the door outside. Um, as you try and come through it later with the bolt cutters. Now, um, this strat is 100% consistent as long as I do it right. So I'm just going to run past. Oh my god, that was terrifying. Oh my that god. That was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> they don't normally both lunge, and the, and the guy did double lunge as well, but you know what? It's in the past. <laughs> we're, we're through it. <laughs> um, every time I say I'm going to do that strat, everyone's like, that's not marathon safe. I'm like, no, it is if it works. So now we have the knife, we can open the shutters. I always like to run over here and touch this door. This is not because we just have to wait for the shutters, so like, I, I, I just see other people do it and I'm like, that must be a reason. Email me if you know the reason why people do that. And there's a guy hanging from the ceiling, and as long as you move past him correctly, he won't fall down on top of you. Things like that don't count as damage, um, but, but it is slower. I'm going to scoot through this door. Uh, you can hear things breaking through the window and stuff. Don't worry about it, it's fine. 
Uh, there's a couple of zombies in this room. So the first one is looking in the vending machine, and he won't bother us for now. And there's a zombie on the floor who will activate later if you go through any of the doors. So I don't want him to get up yet. Um, if I wake him up too early, he can be like right behind the door as I try and get in it later. So we just got one guy to deal with here. I'm going to shoot him in the leg. Um, that's a little bit early. I don't normally like to stun him from that far away. So every time you shoot a zombie in the leg, uh, on hardcore, generally one to four shots will cause a stun. Um, if you see people playing the game on normal, they will aim for the head, because um, head's better for normal, legs better for hardcore. Um, so you always want to like conserve in your head every time you have to get past a zombie by shooting them in the leg. You always want to conserve at least four bullets, because that's like the max it's going to take. And here you can you can skip this like radio call by dropping down. But if I drop down, all three zombies inside the library um, will be awake. So while I can keep them asleep. Um, it's better for me to just go through with just just the one up because if she gets in the way I can shoot her in the leg. She's not in front of me right now, so I'm just going to ignore her. One problem with her is if I shoot her in the leg, if I happen to crit and break her leg, so she's like prone on the floor, um, it means she can be directly behind a door that I come through later. So that's like the best case scenario is that I don't have to do anything to her. Um, and it also saves bullets as well. So I'm going to take the puzzle, I'm going to put it in now because we have limited inventory space. I also want to use the key on the door because items in this game, like key items, you have to do everything possible with them before you can discard them from your inventory. Uh, so I, I'm going to use this key on the door, although I'll never actually go through this door. If I don't unlock this door, I can't discard it. And you can put things away in your, in your item box, but I want this key out of my inventory now because there's other things that I want to pick up. And we are going to do things like we're going to get the shotgun. Um, no damage is routed. It's, it, it's slower than the speed run for sure. Um, but I've tried to be as efficient with the routing as possible. But I just can't go without my shotgun. It's really good at, at killing zombies. What a surprise. <laughs> it's probably my favorite weapon ever. Like the shotgun in this game. Um, it's just so effective. And I love the way they, they, they like balance the the difficulty, where the shotgun, even on the hardest difficulty, it's still one hit kill to the head as long as it's like a clean hit. But before we pick this up, oh, I already did it. I can open my inventory by the way now, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the button's working again. <laughs> so at the start of the run, I got that zombie stuck in the room to the right of me. That means he'll never be behind this door right now, so we don't get bit. Um, any situations like that where a zombie is going to be directly behind a door, it's very difficult to, to dodge without doing like pause buffer strats and things like that. So it's just a bit cleaner if I get him out of the way. The only one I have to worry about is the gentleman on my right. Um, I'm listening out for whether he's going to be crawling over the table. We're not that fortunate. Um, I think I'm okay to go. Yeah, no, I think I'm okay. Uh, he can get in front of you and, and sometimes you have to stun him, but we're fine this time. And fortunately, these guys will never make it to me before this opens, so I don't have to worry about them. So I'm going to have to go past two zombies, and I have nine bullets, which means if it's four for each, we don't have to pick up these. Um, so we only have two to deal with in this room. Uh, the first one's not too bad, but the second one, um, my friend calls him Mr. Safety, and you'll see why when you see him. He can sometimes just be in the most obnoxious places, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Like this. Right, so there's a chance he can be right behind the wall, which would be really annoying. <laughs> That's not too bad. He, was, he, was, he wasn't, like, right close to the corner. All right, that's it for the bolt cutter. And we can pick up this, and we want the, the flash grenade. Okay, so... The guy who was in the vending machine is somewhere behind me now. So I'm going to pick up the shotgun, and the zombie that was, who was lying on the floor outside the door is now going to wake up. So there's two zombies outside this door to deal with. Um, you're going to be dealing with both, whether you go get the shotgun first or you get the side pack. And they will just come right up to the door. And there's a space here where you can shoot them in the head. Um, they can actually open doors even without a head. Um, they didn't, of course they don't do it when I mention it. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll blow the zombie's head off and he'll still open the door. Um, you'll just have to imagine that in your head because he didn't actually do it this time. And that's the side pack. Um, 
the side pack's great. It's a couple of extra inventory slots. I think it's worth picking up. Does anyone like mixing gunpowders? That's the one thing I miss about, like, the more efficient you get with this game, the less gunpowders you get to mix. I like getting all the way to the end boss and then just, like, mixing tons of them. Uh, as long as you fast up those stairs, that lady won't uh, be any trouble. Okay, I'm gonna open this. So it's just a bunch of shotgun shells in this room. I'm gonna take them while I can. The less I get early, the, the less I have to pick up later. Um, they tend to be quite closer. Later, you have to go out your way for them. And I'm always conscious of how many shotgun bullets I have. Okay, there's a look here. He's gonna make himself known. There we go. Uh, Lickers can't see very well, but they can hear really well. So walking is one option. Uh, flash grenades really mess them up. Leon doesn't really have an effective way of killing Lickers, as opposed to Claire, who can just use like two acid rounds. Um, so we have to get kind of creative. This, for this one, I'm going to use a flash grenade. There is a strat where I can run at him. Um, and although it's worked 100% of the time, I like, I just don't fully trust it still. <laughs> like, I've, ne I've never seen it fail, but I just don't trust it. Um, and I look like a real fool if, that, if I tried it and, and got hit here. And we just got one more puzzle piece to get, so uh, she can be quite close. Uh, the lady who we left up. Normally you hear a scream as soon as you open the door, um, but she's never like close enough to be in front of the door unless, as I say, unless you uh, shoot her in the leg and she loses her leg. She can sometimes be like, like that, like put right behind the door. Uh, I'm just killing these zombies now because I'm gonna have to run through here later with Mr. X chasing me. Um, and it's much easier if they're all dead, as I'm sure you can imagine. All right, so we're gonna get the final puzzle piece. We now have the, the detonator to be able to get in there. So typically what they do to ramp up the tension is once the explosion happens, this bookcase shoves off to the side, so you have to shove it up while you're being attacked. Um, Apache's gonna do a little thing here where he's gonna open the door and that bookshelf is actually going to stay stationary. So that is one less worry as we take on this liquor. And here, to avoid this lucky, just look at the ceiling. That's fine. Oh. It's all good. <laughs> Not even close, you know. <laughs> I'm going to take the shortcut down the stairs now. I left that open. Special. So, yeah, I can show you now. Um, so, Leon's health will be, like, dark green. Um, as long as it's dark green, you haven't taken damage. And you, when you're on full health, you can't actually use a healing item. Um, which I forget a chance to show later. Like, if you try and use a first aid spray while you're full health, it won't actually let you use it. There's a first aid spray in the um, counter on the front, in the front, if you want to show, if you want to show it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, there's some stuff later that will look like I've taken, that look like I've taken damage. It's just to prove that I haven't. So I'll, I'll, I'll go past them later and, and do that, like, after the pseudo damage happens, I guess. Okay. And now I'm going to double check that I actually picked up two knives. We have two knives. Good. So we're playing at 120 FPS, and at 120 FPS, um, I'm sure you all know, the knife does more ticks per swing. Um, so frame rate um, affects, it's not the actual damage, but it's, but it's how long the, the knife is hitting them for. Basically, um, the knife deletes bosses. But for even more safety, um, just at the start of this fight, I'm gonna throw a grenade first. It will just guarantee that even if I misplace the knife swings, I just can't fail this fight. Um, so in no damage, you can get grabbed as long as you parry. Um, as long as you don't, as long as you don't actually take damage, it's fine. So I'm going to purposely get grabbed by G1 during this fight. Uh, and if you don't know who G1 is, this is G1. I stepped back when I threw that grenade just so I didn't get stunned by it. Um, you can sort of recoil from grenades. Grenades, my own grenades won't do damage to me, but they. They will like stun me, which means I can swing on G1 less. So he's going to grab me. I'm purposely being grabbed here. I'm going to use my first knife as a defensive, and then I should be able to finish him off with a few swings here. There we go. 
Uh, so, go. in Resident Evil speedrun terms, that's considered the uh, safe play. So, <laughs> take that as you will. Yeah, yeah. I, um, a good friend of mine, Maddie, she like drew art of Leon running at G1 with the knife, saying, "I'm going to go safe on this," because I said I said it on stream once. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm going to do the safe strat." And what I, all I meant was, "I'm going to throw a grenade first, but it, it doesn't look very safe, but it, but it is." <laughs> Just a reminder, we still got that tyrant incentive going on. No inventory for that last boss there. We still want to meet that. It is a thousand, but we're almost, we're about a fifth away there. We want to keep on going. Let's last past 11,000 for the week. Yeah, so just to explain that, the final boss in the game that Leon fights is the, is the super tyrant. And you fight him on an elevator, and you can deal damage to him to make uh, Ada drop the rocket launcher faster. And what I'll do is I will enter the fight with no weapons or items, and I will just survive him the entire um, countdown timer. Um, it's about four or five minutes you actually have to fight him for, or, or not fight him because you don't have any weapons or items. Um, and it's just kind of dodging his swings the entire time until the rocket drops. And it's, it, it's mega stressful. Um, I'm not going to say I regret saying doing it as an incentive, but um, <laughs> like it, it is something to behold right at the end of the run. Like It's, it, it's a long run. Patrick Hadley just shooting a zombie on the floor right there, by the way. <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't mention that. He's going to wake up later, so uh, when, you'll, you'll have to leave here later, and you'll have uh, a lot to deal with, so I'm just, I'm just removing one of the zombies that I'll have to deal with. And I just want to say, like, we, we, so Alien, uh, in Mega Man Legends, you kicked a dog, and then in Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, we were throwing grenades at dogs, and now I'm going to shoot dogs with a shotgun. Like, how did this happen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the progression's pretty real. <laughs> Why is it always like zombie Doberman or Rottweilers? Why is it never like zombie <laughs> Pomeranians? <laughs> I like to think zombie Pomeranians are from Parasite Eve, unfortunately. Yeah. That just makes it infinitely worse. Zombie poodles in Dead Rising chop till you drop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You, you got oh, that. Oh, my God. You had to remind me of that old lady. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. The worst. All right, I'm just going to grab more shotgun shells. I love shotgun shells. Shotgun best gun ever. People are always like, oh, you know, uh, you know, you can do the game faster if you don't get the shotgun. Like, you can take it from my cold, dead hands. And I'll never give up the shotgun. Oh. <laughs> uh, here's some more strats that my friend said. Don't do that at the event. Coming up. So we got rid of the dogs that were in the kennels. That, uh, that would have, when we did the puzzle on the wall, it would let those dogs out. But there's one on my right. There's one sneaking under that fence there. I'm just going to ignore both. Um, there's one turning a corner. As I turn the corner, um, this is the strat. My friends were like, "Don't do that in a marathon," but I think it's 100% safe, unless I get hit here. I don't know why he'd move like that. I've never seen him move like that before. That was scary, <laughs> but no, it works. See, it's consistent. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna try and get as many of these dogs. There's, th there's three like static dogs. Oh, I shot him twice and he didn't die. Damn it. Um, there's three dogs out in that car park, so the first time I enter it, I just try and get as many of them as I can. Um, and then later when I have to go through there, there'll be less to deal, to deal with. Um, the general strategy is just hide behind like the mini that's parked there, um, and the dog will either have to run all the way around or jump over it. And, and they don't usually do it like two at a time. Uh, they, they can, but it's rare. Um, and I'm really suffering for like pistol bullets. I think there's like pistol bullets in one of these. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, and I really don't want this in my inventory. I, I, I wasn't expecting to get pistol bullets there, so I'll just throw this away, I guess. All right, there's a bunch of zombies in this room. We're just gonna shoot them in the leg. And the head. So if you shoot them in the leg first before you uh, crown them with the shotgun, it means they won't have their hands in front of their face. And the shotgun only works as like a one-hit kill. 
um, if all of the all of the pellets, I guess, connect with the head. The tension is is is, is pretty high right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. We're just watching in silence. <laughs> Most of us are learning just as much as you guys. <laughs> You're my friends. I just, I just wanted you. Yeah. And we're all, we're all really, big, really big fans of this game, so it's uh, really cool to see this game being played in so many different ways. Also, do you want to bring up why you keep uh, aiming on the stairs? Uh, it's faster. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you, re you repeat the initial cycle of the running animation, like the normal one, which is faster than j just having Leon climb stairs normally. And uh, earlier on, it was actually integral for Strat to avoid a zombie uh, encounter altogether. And like Apache said, it is faster. So they do it. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> I love the name it. I love it. I, I was, I was saying it's the, the basic rule whenever you watch this type of stuff. It's like if you're, if you're ever wondering why someone does that, it's either because it's faster or it's uh, so they don't die. Words of wisdom coming from Spooner. All right, this is a this is a dangerous little part because two zombies are going to burst out this door. If two zombies grab you at the same time, you can't use a defensive. And if you shoot too early um, or too late, well, obviously you know what happens if you shoot too late, but if you shoot too early, they'll just recoil. Um, and they can do like an immediate lunge as well. So um, I'm gonna... I hope that's right. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab this club key. I'm putting stuff away because I've got to pick up other stuff. Uh, the worst feeling in the world is where you can't pick up that grenade or the thing you want because you've got too much stuff that you already picked up. All right, I'm having a wonderful time. I hope Mr. X doesn't like randomly show up. That would suck. Yeah, shout out to the 1998 OST, by the way. Makes this game very atmospheric. Oh, no. I hope this works. Jesus All right. <laughs> yeah, so if you just like uh, hold you, put yourself to the right side of the wall and um, aim at the, the broken part of the wall and aim at his head, um, as long as, excuse me sir, I can't come through here, uh, you, can you can always dodge his attack, he always does that um, attack, unless you've patched your game by the way, if, you, if you're playing like Xbox uh, Series X and you've updated your game or you play on like PS5, I think they've patched it so it doesn't always work now, but don't take my word for that. Oh god, I need to get out this door. Let me out this door. <laughs> uh, so I've purposely activated that liquor in the room. You heard it screaming. Um, when I go back into this room, it'll be gone. So it goes to the other side of the building uh, where it can't hear me anymore. So I kind of got stuck on the door there, <laughs> uh, which would have been awful, but we managed to get out. Uh, this gentleman is just coming through the window here. Um, he'll be a nightmare on the way out. God, I'm going to go for the quick dodge on Mr. X. Um, what's, oh, what's the worst that could happen? So, I could lure Mr. X back into this room, um, or I could just run at him, or he could not turn up. Okay, he stand up. <laughs> he didn't do the attack that I wanted him to do, oh, no. so I have to lure him back. I tried for it, guys. I tried to do the I tried to do the the, the most exciting version. Um, Mr. X's biggest enemy is like uh, anything that's like a circle. Can't handle it. <laughs> if you just have like, I don't know, the, the, there's a wooden bench upstairs in RPD that's like hilarious to uh, to bait him into walking around. He just he doesn't know he doesn't know what to do. But yeah, he's chasing us um, for as long as he can keep up with us. I think he's lost us already, actually. Okay, see you, mate. Oh no, he's back. Uh, it's whether the like you can always hear him when he's around, but when the music's playing, that's like when he's when he's on you. Uh, so that's why we did most of this puzzle earlier, so we can do it a little bit quicker now. Um, he takes a long time to climb ladders, so even if he gets in here, which you'll see him come through this door in the bottom corner. Yep, there you go. Um, it takes him a while to actually climb the ladder, so it will give me time to. Uh, there's a couple of zombies here that I want to get rid of. 
because they can just be irritating on the way back. First time stun is like really useful. Most of the time, like getting a first time stun doesn't matter. Oh my god, I can't believe I missed his head. It was such an easy target. But as long as you can deal with those two zombies kind of before he turns up, it's really helpful. So, clock tower puzzle, put the big cog in, take it out, put it in upstairs and put the small one downstairs. Uh, Mr. X can't enter this, this building. Fortunately, uh, I always thought it'd be really funny, like if they patch the game on April Fool's Day and just let <laughs> let him roam free. Like, how awesome would that be? It's like I'm okay, I'm safe. He can't come in here, and then he turn, just opens the door. It's lun under safe rooms as well, and on the like, on April Fool's Day. It's uh, it's it's really rare, but he can he can hang out directly outside this door, so as soon as you run through the door, he throws you. And all the way leading up to Magfest, I was like, he, no, he never does, he never does that, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna burst through the door. And then earlier in practice is, what, is exactly what he did. And it, like, it, it's so rare that it's long enough that you forget that it can happen, and then all of a sudden it happens. Um, I'm just explaining this so when I jump out of my skin in front of you or something, like, it's not awkward, like, I give it enough build up. No, I'm gonna push the door open. Okay, okay. We're good. I feel like the idea of Mr. X is more scary than he actually is. Because when he gets up to you, he just punches you or throws you, but like when you're not expecting him, that's, that's when he really gets me. All right, so I've got three shells. I think there's two dogs left um, in the car park downstairs. Uh, which is enough. I think that's all we need now for the rest of RPD. Uh, unless I miss. We got, what, seven in the pistol as backup? Yeah, we should be good. Famous last words, right? In my opinion, this is the most difficult part of the RPD, so escaping the prison. Not so much this section or going through the car park, but just, just leaving uh, the prison section and you'll, and you'll see why. And I got the, the part, yeah. Alright, so I'm going to hide behind Mr. Bean's car and hopefully get rid of the dogs. There's one or two. That's one. And the other one, yeah, cool. It only takes one shotgun shell as long as you get close enough to them. And yeah, this part, I'm really not looking forward to it. We're going to do the fastest version possible. Oh, that's good. I missed the quick turn there, but alright. I just got to hit it with Mr. X's L. I'll hit the one that counts. So there's a quick puzzle to do. Enjoying my puzzle solving skills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this bit sucks. I hate this bit. Does anyone else hate this bit? Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna open this door. I'm just gonna run at Mr. X and hope for the best. It should be. It should be fine. Oh, two slab, two slab. Oh God, yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Right, there was probably like a, a frame or something. Don't hit me in the back. There was probably like a frame or something where like if you if you stand too close to Mr. X, he will like throw you. It automatically activates. But when he punches, um, his guard's kind of down. You can run past him. But oh my god, that was close. I'm so glad to be out there. I'm so glad to see Ada as well. Ada's my favorite character. Have you seen all the cool Ada cosplayers that have been at uh, MagFest? Oh. What a great character. All right, we're out of RPD. I'm so I've, I've never been more happy to be out of RPD. It was rough there for a while, but no damage is intact for now. And Hawkfoot, if there's anything you want to say, feel free to join. Oh, in, mate. Goodness, I you know 
I would really love to see you, you know, take down the tyrant in a more pleasurable <laughs> outfit, but uh, so far, no budges. I mean, we met, we met our original goal, but I think we can push 11,000 for the rest of the weekend. Definitely push that for you guys. Keep those donations coming for Child's Play. You know, I've, I'll be honest, I've been to so many different speedrun events, um, and th this is my absolute favorite, without a doubt. I, I love my class so much. It is so fun. Um, Thank you. Being able to play for you all. We try to keep it fun in here. Part of the Umbrella Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. Just saying. That explains the horrible things I've seen. Ah, oh, you gotta love Leon's naivety. <laughs> Based on what you've said, the sewer seems fitting. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. <laughs> I really love Leon in this game. It's so funny. Come on. Sewers, Sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? <laughs> a secret <laughs> underground lab? That's illegal. I just, I just love how they, they're talking to each other from so far away. <laughs> like they can't even hear each other. Are you sure this isn't Florida? Perhaps. I mean, I'm coming from Orlando. That that looks like a you know something we find on a day that ends in Y. It's kind of the walkie-talkie section, um, but we're going to run from uh, a big monster, which we've kind of been doing the entire game, to be fair. But this is like a scripted one. Uh, so the trick is to go all the way to the left, and it snaps once. All the way to the right, and it snaps twice. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> and then back to the left again. Florida golf course. I'm just saying. Um, if you if you wait there, he uh, he gets past the barricade and kills you. I was so I was curious one day I had to find out. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. What a great character. Whoa. It's after hours. <laughs> Any day now, Ida. What the hell was? Just get up here. His name was Gary. Mm -hmm. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is actually you a zombie later that I've named Gary as well. Monsters, not <laughs> Fair point. I'm just impressed you made it in one piece. All right, we're just chilling until we start the Ada section now, and then the intensity gets back up again. I'm actually so grateful for this break between like, RPD and the rest of the game. So besides MGS3 and uh, RE2 make, what else are you interested in, Apache? Like, uh, like speedrun wise, or? Yeah. Um, I love Final Fantasy X. Um, so do these guys. Uh, <laughs> I got the two best Final Fantasy X players in the world with me. Um, and uh, Dead Rising, which I've, I've been playing a lot in secret. Uh, maybe I'll unveil that one day. But yeah, mostly mostly Metal Gear. I play Metal Gear all the time. <laughs> Alright, it's time for Ada and her secret weapon. Which is kind of like, I don't know, I'm from England, so this is kind of like a, a Doctor Who sonic screwdriver, but it only works on like ceiling fans. <laughs> She's like the worst Time Lord. So you can get these uh, through the wall here. Um, Destroy the fan, activate the door before we go down, because once we drop down off here, the, the zombie's going to wake up. So we want to open the door here before we go down. Cool, 
as long as we take uh, a good line here, the zombie won't bother us. Let's just deal with him on the way back. And as we turn this corner, a zombie's just going to drop from the ceiling. You don't want to be too close when he drops, otherwise he can like stun you and up getting grabbed. I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to go over here and pick up the flash grenade. It just makes it like 100% consistent for leaving. Oh, he's crawling around. He like never does this. I'm so annoyed he's done this. You can't believe he's done this. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Oh my god. It was always okay. It's fine, guys. It's all part of my plan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've never seen him. I'm, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen him just stay on the floor like that. I was like, uh, what should I do here? Normally, you're fast enough that, that that zombie there hasn't quite made it over to this area yet. Um, but I guess we're a little bit slow with all the nonsense going on. But well, that's pretty much it for the Ada section. We're just going to open a door and hopefully Mr. X doesn't turn up. That would be awkward. As long as you're fast enough. So Mr. X has just come up the elevator. You can hear him like thudding behind us. As long as you're fast enough, he can never catch up to you. I was saying, it's funny because we saw a sign earlier that said, ask about the Ada section. And, and we all thought about this section right here. Yeah. I much prefer the Ada section to the Jerry section. Agreed. Jerry's better in Resident Evil 6. Everyone's favorite Resident Evil. I mean... It's not that bad. People are just mean. <laughs> People are very mean, you know. Bravo. I can't believe it. We've been locked away by a net Birkin. I'm not the only one after it. You realize that. And you won't die alone. So she's gonna lock us in a furnace, but fortunately we have the only device that could get us out of here, I guess. Um, you just gotta do these in the correct order. And you have an overly generous amount of time to get out. Number three. Visitor clearance confirmed. Your ID is authorized until October 1st. Please return before this date. Not gonna happen. Right, back to Leon. So, there's a new type of enemy that's introduced now, which is the, uh, the G-Mutants. And they will hide underwater from us. Uh, typically they can grab you, they can spawn um, the smaller versions of themselves, I guess. Um, they're an awful enemy. Our strat for dealing with them will be basically making them dive into the water, or, or feeding them grenades or knives, depending on what we have at the time. I'm trying to be quick here because as long as I'm fast, um, there's a there's like a blue jacket zombie that won't quite have made his way to me, um, and I can run past him rather than shooting him, which means I get to save a shotgun shell. So wherever I can like save shells, um, I'll do that. Hopefully, I was fast enough. I'll know if he was at if he's at the end of the corridor, so facing away. Yeah, perfect. That means I can just hug this left side here. <laughs> It's really irritating when you when you uh, blow a zombie's head off. The sound of them like talking or shouting doesn't stop, so you can't actually tell without using like visuals whether or not you've got the the decapitate on them. <laughs> right. So the thing about Gmians is they're really good at hiding. Let's see if you can spot this hide and seek champion. You don't want to shoot them from too far away, like um, the animation of rising out of the water stuns you and if you get hit by it, um, they can they can grab you, have to use the defensive. Cable car. But basically yeah, getting around them is pretty straightforward, there's only like 
It's only later where they really become a problem. I'm gonna run over here, take these two shotgun shells, because I'm kind of low, actually. She I usually have more than this. Shout out to uh, the classic sewer soundtrack for being one of the most relaxing things ever. I'm actually amazed how well the uh, original music goes with the new game. gonna get a T-bar and then I'm gonna show you the uh, stealth mechanics in this game. This game actually has stealth mechanics. Kind of. Oh, here we go. We got $50 from Ramheart Bird. Excited to see in person for the first time my favorite game being run at MAGFest 2024. Hi! Yeah, I love that. I actually, uh... Oh, if I walk here... As long, as long as the zombies don't actually look at you, if you're not sprinting, they uh, they won't like aggro to you. So there's like pseudo stealth in the game. But yeah, the person who donated saying it's their favorite game. Um, I'm not normally big on remakes and stuff. Like I prefer originals most of the time, but this is genuinely one of the best games ever made in my opinion. I was shocked how much I like it. I've not played uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake yet. I hope it's as good. <laughs> Uh, as long as we avoid that uh, Jimmy and we can, he won't bother us. Maybe on the way back. So there's going to be one zombie up. And he's not in a good place, so we can just grab the piece and run. Shoot a bunch of bullets here because I don't want the pistol bullets in my inventory. Inventory is so tight here that um, I can't waste a single slot. And another hide and seek champion here. He's gone into the water, so let him rise out of it. This guy wakes up on your way back, so just get rid of him now. All right, looks like we are approaching the best verb in the game. <laughs> Everybody's a big fan. Yeah, no, I hate this section so much. Uh, this is kind of like, I mentioned at the start that I've right with this to get rid of RNG as much as possible, but this area is quite heavily affected by RNG, especially for like how long it will take you to do it. Um, I'm going to be mostly avoiding them, um, but especially on the way back, they can be in a bunch of weird positions. Oh my God. Um, so I have a knife and three grenades. I can like use the knife. I have to use the knife. I have to get rid of it. But um, if I use two grenades, it's not ideal. But I definitely don't want to use all three. I need. I need to keep at least one. So I'm turning as I get grabbed by this guy on purpose because it'll sometimes. When you push away from him, you'll be like here, which is, it's hard to explain while it's happening, but it, he kind of let me pass him because I, I turned into him. He pushed me away into the direction I was going. So that's all part of my plan. I wanted to get rid of that knife because I need it out of my inventory. Um, and I now have three grenades, two of which I can use to escape. If I have to use three, it, it just means um, G2 will be more difficult, basically. Not gonna lie, I forgot you had that knife, and I was just like, oh no, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's gonna fall and trigger, so we just wanna kinda take him out pre preemptively. Just doing a bunch of messing around with the puzzle pieces in order to get the flamethrower, um, which is a really good weapon. A uh, flamethrower gives you an easier G2 fight. I feel like Leon has the easier G2 fight, and Claire has the easier G3 fight, uh, because the grenade launcher can stun G3. Um, and the flamethrower kind of like decimates you too. <laughs> I completely forgot what I was doing for a second. <laughs> 
I'd rather forget here than, than somewhere else, to be honest. All right, we did the, we got all the puzzle pieces, and now we're gonna make our way back. So yeah, I can get unfortunate with the spawns and stuff here. Uh, I'm just kind of hoping for the best. Um, it's not ideal, actually. I'm gonna hopefully put a shot on that one and make him dive into the, it's so awkward to get the shot. You can hit him from here, it's just really awkward. If you shoot them while you stood up, um, they dive into the water. Uh, and then there's like a chance whether or not they'll get back up again. I'm just gonna reset the room. I might have to I might have to aggro it. Um, uh, we'll just I'm just gonna have to aggro it. You know when I was talking about the, 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 the bad RNG? This is it. This sucks. This sucks. Oh my God. This sucks so much. Oh my god! Alright, one more. He's gonna he's gonna do a, a grab and I'm gonna drop down and just sort of scoop past him. Another successful trip to the sewers. Awesome. I was a little nervous there, could you tell? Yeah, I'll keep it getting interesting. <laughs> All part of the script. <laughs> Barely getting by without getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'll pick up that green herb and show you that I still have full health, but my inventory is literally full. Like, I, I used every single slot um, for that trip. And that means you can go and get all the, uh, the uh, like, the chess pieces uh, without having to go back to an inventory box. All right, coming up to the G2 fight. I'm going to put away the T-bar, the pistol, two grenades, I only need one here, and I'm going to take out a single flash grenade. Uh, yeah, Knight Rook, Bishop, King Queen, Paul. We did it, we won chess. Grandmaster Leon. Okay, almost there. Yeah. Do you know those friends I was talking about earlier that said like don't do the don't do these don't do this in marathon, don't do that strat in marathon? Um, here's like three strats back to back, which are like not marathon safe. They are because they're consistent, but like if you do them wrong, you get hit. So just don't do it wrong, right? All right, I'm going to activate G2 by walking across, across this rope. I'm going to throw a grenade at the door, and it has to explode after Leon says G Jesus Christ. That might be a little bit late. I might get hit here. Okay, good. No, we're good. We're good. All right, he's going to push open this door, and I'm going to hit him with a flamethrower until he kind of zips across the screen. And I'm going to run away. I don't like how close he was to me there. Um, yeah, this shouldn't be fine. So we're gonna hit the hit the container switch, and what we're trying to do is we want to kill him with just one container swing. So we have to lower his health enough. Pick up this flash grenade and the knife, and now I'm gonna go behind him and I'm gonna bait him into swinging at me, just like this. Oh no, fucked it. Oh my god. I'm sorry for swearing. Now I got you. That's not meant to happen, by the way. <laughs> oh god, I hope he dies. Yeah, this should be fine. Yes. Oh my goodness. I think uh, I think you learned to swear as a three. <laughs> so many close calls. <laughs> I'm actually making this look very, it makes this run very interesting, just barely missing by, missing I have by. no idea how I dodged that attack, I have no idea. <laughs> it's like I say, it's totally consistent if you do it right. Alright, we get to chill for a minute and, and think about all the decisions that led us up to this run. Uh, so I'm going to put the knife away, uh, inventory space is super limited here. Uh, 
Uh, so when you, uh, when you access the tram, um, you can either beat Ada into it or she can beat you and you have like a little race. Um, I, like to, I like to race it every time, I always try and win. I don't know if there's like a consistent way to always beat up. Oh my god, I beat her today, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. And you're, talk, you're talking like 0. 0.3 seconds lost if you if you lose, so you know, it's a big deal. This tram is bound for Nest. Do not exit until the final destination. Still got time on that incentive for Mr. Sunshine. Getting that super tyrant, no inventory. Don't do it to me. I've used up all my luck, guys. I've definitely <laughs> used up all my luck. <laughs> There's no more luck left. Uh, this has to be, without a doubt, the most ignored advice in video game history. I've never seen anyone stand clear of those doors. <laughs> Alright, so swing a right, pick up the grenade. Alright, we're just picking up a bunch of stuff here. Um, the powder is for shotgun shells. Uh, this is Gary. Um, he's behind this door, usually. Or sometimes on the left. Here he, here he is. One of the handfuls of armored zombies uh, in this Gary. campaign. Gary. <laughs> And we don't need to come back here, so it doesn't really matter if that door opens and then there's, there's a zombie that comes through the automatic door there. Well, we're not going to come back here. Okay. Alright, so in the lab there is uh, a new enemy type, which is the, the Ivy. Is that their real name? It's just kind of what people call them, right? Yeah, people just call them that, maybe. Um, their quirk is th they can grab you, um, like you can always use a defensive when they grab you, but if you don't have a defensive, they're a one-hit kill. Um, so yeah, they're kind of scary. I actually forgot to get the upgraded shotgun part as well, which is like fine, I've played without it a lot of times, but I was like, in Marathon I should spend the 15 seconds getting it, it lets it fire faster, and most importantly it stuns the IVs, like almost guaranteed when you hit them, but you know what, it's too late to go back, um, we'll go without it. So you'll see them the first time, one drops down from there, uh, one's going to wake up over here. Here you can just be fast enough to get past them. Uh, three, one, two, three. And two, oh, six, seven. And this will just unlock the doors that we need to get through. Like, I, I just got rid of everything and my inventory is already kind of full, but we're going to start using it all up in a second. Um, I'm going to go into the lab here. There is a grenade on the ground. I need both grenades to get rid of some liquors. As I said earlier, like, Leon doesn't really have a good way of killing liquors, um, but I think I've, I've made a strat that's good for getting rid of the liquors. So red, green, blue, red, green. And it's red green. That's how you do science. Hell yeah. Uh, sometimes the liquor can make it, not the liquor, the ivy, can make his way like down here. 
Uh, generally, if you just shoot them anywhere, it will, it will stun them with the shotgun. Um, you want to hit the bulbs. Um, that kind of like guarantees a stun. But right, I'm just going to go for it. There's a strat here that um, people said like, if you're not, if, if I get hit here, uh, you're all allowed to like, just shout dumbass at the top of your voice. Like that's absolutely fine. Um, no one should do this, but it look. If I get it, it'll look really cool. It'll look really cool. So we're gonna let the liquors come down, and I'm gonna throw a flash grenade in the air. Hopefully it hits both. Uh, only one down so far. There's the other one. Why is he up? Right. Hopefully they're both dead. They, they could be. They might not be. But I didn't get hit. That's the most important thing, I think. Uh, we, we can find out who's alive and who isn't. But yeah, two two grenades will kill. Um, liquors. <laughs> <laughs> Packs me up every time. It reminds me of when you dropped on those guys in MGS3. Yeah. All according to plan. Just knowing when enemies drop from a, like, a high roof. Uh, because the liquors might be up, uh, there's a trick that I learned from a, a really good no damage runner called Matt the Rock. Uh, he learned that if you open that door and go through it and then come back out, it, re it repositions the liquors downstairs. Because I don't know if they're dead or not, I'm still going to have to walk. Um, but the corpses will always be where they died, so we're hoping that there'll be two dead liquors in front of this door. Uh, but I got a feeling that there might only be one. Oh yeah, God, I had a feeling. Terrifying. I had a feeling there might only be one. Um, how much health do you reckon the last one has left? I think he has one shotgun shell, but he's on the wall now behind there. I'm, I'm just going to walk. You know what? We've come so. I feel like I've pushed my luck so much that it's like. For, for, for one liquor to walk through one room, like, I'll just deal with it. Hopefully, I don't accidentally press sprint. Um, the first time I got hit and no damage run in a marathon was because I, I pressed sprint accidentally. Um, it's easily done. So, yeah, there's still one liquor alive. He's on a wall. That's the map. We should be okay here. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Ugh. Who left the freezer? Broken. Cooling complete. I'm trying to think, do I need to go in that room? Uh, seven. I like doing uh, math with shotgun shells now. No, I think we're good. So we're just going to walk out of here. The liquors, uh, they, they're attracted to the sound of your footsteps, but they will uh, immediately aggro if you, if you sprint. So he's just going to be on the wall here, actually. Yeah, he's chilling. It's totally fine. And yeah, there's a big gunpowder here. We can grab some much needed shotgun shells. I, I want to enter the G3 fight with um, eight, eight, eight on my shotgun, so eight um, already loaded and eight reserve. And that will just guarantee that I have enough for the rest of the game. Oh my god, I just missed. It's fine, I've got a knife. I really need that knife, but, you know, we'll be okay. Probably. Dispensing. That did the trick. He should be down. I should be able to just go pick it back up again. Nope, that's. There we go. Alright, we could get any kind of like pattern with these. Um, Alright, so as soon as I pick this up, Mr. X is going to turn up. You generally have like two chances to fire shotgun shells. So I've got to fire one here. And I may have to fire another one. I can just use the knife, actually. I was like, please stun in my head. I was like, please stun, please stun. We should be okay. So Mr. Eck, you didn't actually, I don't think you saw him, but he is sort of lurking behind us. All good. We're out of there. Um, I don't think I have enough shotgun shells for G3. So... I don't know, we'll just have to make something up, I guess. What could go wrong? I 
more intently seeing. The, the, the tension of the music adds perfectly to this moment. I feel like you've clutched up insanely well so far. <laughs> I feel like even though it looks kind of dire, you've totally got it in the bag. No, what's one, what's one more clutch? It would be kind of funny to come all this way and die at this boss too. You know, who knows what could happen? It's a total mystery. So are we gonna add, do a save just in case, or are we just gonna uh, wing it? Nah, we'll just do it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> just win. Oh, I'm such a legend. I actually had two gunpowders. We're actually gonna be fine for ammo. Um, I need. Yeah, this looks right. Okay. It's so hard to remember what the inventory is like at this, at this day. It's so late and I don't know, normally I can remember. Um, my knife health doesn't look great, but I shouldn't need all three anyway. I'm going to equip the, uh, the one that's got the most in it to start with. Uh, so eight, seven, and there's actually gunpowders in this next room, so I'm glad I picked those up. Um, this fight relies on me um, standing at the right ranges from G3 to make him do certain attacks. It's very difficult to judge those ranges, um, but essentially, like, I need him to like jump, and then I need him to do uh, the combo. I'll kind of explain it as All I go right. through it. Now back to Ada. Um, it's not completely consistent, but it's pretty damn close. Who's confident? I'm pretty confident. The most. <laughs> All right, G3. Um, so, we're going to start the fight. We're going to shoot his eye, hope to not get a crit, which we didn't. Shoot his back eye, run away from him. And now we get multiple chances to hit the top eye. Perfect. And then hit that eye. And he's down for the first time. We're going to have to put him down a second time. The second time is much, much harder. But during this time, I'm just going to hit him with a flamethrower until he stands up. Once he stands up and yells at me, I'm going to bait him into jumping at me, hopefully. And I need to get this eye as quickly as possible, and the back eye. Now I need him to do a backswing, and then I've got to stand at like the perfect range to make him do the fall combo. Perfect. So let's go. Oh, I've never been so happy to see an animation in my life. And now that'll give me a chance to destroy this eye. And now I should be able to finish the fight right here, as long as I don't mess up these knives. <laughs> he should die here. Oh, I really hope he dies. Oh, oh my god. Madman. Oh. Madman. Actual madman. <laughs> Man when the knife broke and I was like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the pause was perfect. <laughs> to the, huh? He what was just it? looking at it like, and I, and I was like, yeah, Leon, me too, dude. Me too. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, we were going to make our way down to the last fight in the game. Um, th this feels like a fever dream at this point. Uh, <laughs> no matter what happens from this point, guys, this has been the most interesting run of Resident Evil I've ever, I've ever played. I've enjoyed it so much. Um, let's clutch it out one more time. We're heading to the final boss, uh, the Super Tyrant. If you guys want to hit the incentive, I will do it with no weapons and items in my inventory. Um, if it doesn't get met, I'll do it with a bunch of grenades. Uh, it's still pretty difficult and cool, and it's, it's, it's possible I'll get hit either way. Um, the super tyrant doesn't mess around. But yeah, we've got a, a couple of minutes before I get there, yeah. Well, we're still a good 800 or so away from it. We haven't had too much come for it, but we still got, I don't know, Five more minutes. Anything can happen, man. And that, especially after that fight, goodness, I did not understand how powerful the knife was for this one. <laughs> it almost wasn't powerful enough. 
But yeah, um, that end, the end of that G3 fight, if, if I didn't kill him there, he'll walk to a wall, he'll pull the panel off the wall, which takes a bunch of time, and, and then I have to hope that he'll die to the flamethrower. Um, but during that phase, he's, his attacks become like a lot more rapid and violent, so I'm glad we managed to kill him there. There's a knife there, but we really don't need it. God, oh. It almost wasn't. Can I just have a second? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. You entered the survival horror right there. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I swear to god I wish I could do something like that on purpose. <laughs> Like, that was complete, like, my brain just switched off for a sec. <laughs> it's pretty cool, bro. You're right there. The oh, you there. played insane. Alright, it's so the last fight of the entire run. It's an insanely hard fight. Uh, and then we just got to walk on out of here. It's the, the super tyrant. Um, if we didn't meet the incentive, I will defeat him with grenades. Let's see how many we got. We got a few. This should be fine. Just, uh, just don't get hit by the super tyrant. Done this for loads of times. Or rocks. <laughs> yeah, so not only can you get hit by the super tyrant, but you can also get hit by rocks that appear in the center of the, the area. So um, I need to bait him into ending up in weird places. <laughs> I know that doesn't make sense, but it'll make sense in a sec. Every time I damage him, it'll make Ada drop the rocket launcher a little bit quicker. Here's There's the, the rocks. Oh, this is such an awkward place. I really don't want to be here with you, big guy. Oh my god! And again, I really don't want to be here with him. Also, my inventory is not working again. Alright, we should be fine. I'm just <laughs> just giving the shoulder a good sniff there. There you go. I've never been so nervous in my goddamn life. I know this looks easy, and it kind of is, but not when you're under this much pressure. <laughs> yes, dude. Alright, one more. Just one more. Throw the grenade. <laughs> oh my god. Time is actually coming up. It's coming up so soon. I just gotta walk on out of here. All I do is shoot this exit sign here. And that'll kill all the zombies that are in my way. I'm one, I was about to do one for safety and blow myself up, but no, we're out of here. And that is time. Thank you. Let's go. Woo! No damage. No damage. Let's see that results screen, man. Let's go. 106. 106. No S plus. S plus. Yo, shout out to the Resident Evil speedrunning community. We got two fantastic no-hit runs this year. Carsey at AGDQ with uh, Claire, that was fantastic. And now we've got Leon with Apache, so. 
guys, I, I, do, I, I do this thing. I always tell people, like, uh, people uh, watch you do a run and they're like, oh, I could never do that. And it's like, it's okay. If you watch me do it, you actually did it yourself. So congratulations on your no hit run. <laughs> <laughs> I really, if like, if it's okay, I would really just like to take a picture with all of you. Thank you for being an amazing crowd. Um, I'm just going to jump up to the front here and take a quick selfie with you all, so I can remember this moment for the rest of my life. It, I, I had to travel like 4K miles to come here, so it's not all the time I get to come to America. And every single time, I have the most amazing experience. And and, and thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. <laughs> Here, wait. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up again for Apache Smash. Give it up to you guys for breaking 10K.